I will never paint minis or something to that effect is something that I had said in an old video years ago. At the time, I was still pretty new to the hobby and the idea of painting minis really intimidated me, both in terms of skill involved and just the daunting idea of getting into that side of the hobby. All the extra stuff to buy and learn to use that would consume valuable resources like time and money. In our games, we just use paper minis and I had a lot of fun making them and to this day, I still use them from time to time. They certainly have their own charm. But at some point, I started painting minis. And not only did I start, I really got into it. It took a while, but it eventually became a part of the hobby that I really love. And these days, I'm painting a couple of minis every single week. And I always look forward to my mini painting day in my schedule. So I guess I made myself into a liar. Well, not really, because when I made that statement, it was truthful at the time. It's just that things changed. I changed, and I'm glad that I did. As I worked on a project this week, I reflected on all the things that I've learned and started using over the past few years. I was amazed at how many things I once thought I'd never be into that I'm now doing on a regular basis. I once thought I'd never get into 3D printing, but now it's a regular part of my workflow and something I've become very excited about. I still use the technology very sparingly in terms of terrain. I mostly just use it for printing miniatures, like characters. It makes me feel like I have no limitations. I can just make miniatures materialize out of liquid and it blows my mind. And to me, that's a lot more exciting than just ordering some minis online or going to a store and buying some. It's allowed me to populate my collection, my terrain, and my games with amazing, perfectly themed minis. It's also let me do stuff otherwise impossible, like take two models and print one at 32 millimeter scale and the other at 75 millimeter scale to create an epic showdown between a huge adversary and a small hero. This sort of freedom to change scales is something that shouldn't be undervalued as a modeler or as a game master. You might find a model that is your perfect enemy off the shelf, say a Reaper model, which is a great option, but maybe the creature is just a little underwhelming in terms of size. You can't just hand wave and make it bigger, but with 3D printing, you can. And by avoiding this technology for the first few years that it was gaining popularity in the hobby, I was really depriving myself of a huge opportunity. And I can say this about so many different hobby things, tools, materials, techniques. There are a lot of them that I avoided and some that I still am. But every time I try something on this list of new intimidating things, they inevitably become a major part of my workflow and encourage me to create things that I wouldn't have made before. I used to have this silly notion that I had to make every single aspect of a project by hand, which was especially silly since there are so many cheats that somehow were acceptable under that weird constraint. Like I felt like cheating if I bought a model and used that as a basis for my build, but I didn't feel like it was cheating in the same way if I used the toy from the dollar store. That's not rational. Then I evolved into thinking it wasn't cheating to use bot models or minis, but it was still somehow cheating to use 3D printed models. This is all absolute nonsense. The whole mindset falls apart under the smallest bit of scrutiny. I think I was creating these rules for myself as an excuse to avoid things that I was either intimidated by or simply couldn't afford at the time or didn't have access to. And I've come to see that as a common mindset among people in the hobby space. It's a weird excuse people make to justify avoiding things. If you're intimidated by a tool or a technique or you can't afford it or you can't find it, it's a lot easier to just get mad at it and be resentful rather than just accept it as another valuable tool for hobbyists. 3D printers are cheating. MDF kits are cheating. Contrast paints are cheating and overpriced. Using a hot wire tool isn't as legit as using a knife. All sorts of hogwash people tell themselves as a way to feel better about not having those things. And I was guilty of this myself for a time, but thankfully I have grown out of it. Now I look at the world and see all sorts of cool ideas and technologies that might be beyond my reach, but instead of resenting them, I let them inspire me. I think about how I could use them. I try to find them if possible. And if I can't get my hands on something, I try to find alternatives that might give me similar results. This is the single most empowering change of mind that I've had as a hobbyist and as a creator. Painting minis. Wow, like this was the silliest thing of all to deprive myself of as a hobbyist. If I could go back and change something in my trajectory as a builder, it would be to start printing and painting miniatures way sooner. 
Now, speaking of minis, none of these developments would have happened for me as a creator if it wasn't for work being done by sculptors and model providers across the globe. Companies like Loot Studios have been crucial in unlocking this part of the hobby for me. It's not just having cool models available to print at will that made me immerse myself in printing minis. It was the fact that companies like Loot made it easy and approachable. I'm still fumbling my way through my 3D printer journey, but I'm able to win most of the time because someone else has prepared the files and the supports. And I can, for the most part, just hit print and be on my way. By now, I'm sure you already know Loot and what they offer tons of minis per month for a crazy, crazy low price. In their December fantasy bundle, they have really outdone themselves. Not only does this set include a ridiculous amount of minis and terrain for just 15 bucks, but it also has some really massive ones. There's two huge dragon models and an included diorama base, which you can make a pretty cool scene with. They're also providing special dragon breath head options that will only be available to people subscribed during December. Now, if a ton of models, a bunch of terrain, including castle walls and siege equipment isn't enough, if two huge dragons isn't enough, well, they've done something extra special and are including a life-size printable, like one-to-one -one scale dagger that you could use as a prop in your game or, or maybe part as a costume at your next convention. If you're not into the whole costume thing, you can just print it out, paint it, and put it on the wall as decoration for your game room. All of this for just $15. It, it, it's crazy, just crazy. I'll put a link in the description so you can join up for yourself. Anyway, back to things that I should have tried sooner. Airbrushing, man oh man, airbrushing. This tool really intimidated me in the past, and I won't lie, it was a bit tricky to get capable with it, probably more so than any other tool, but it was worth it. I could not imagine living without an airbrush at this point. It unlocks so many doors. Of course, it's great for efficiency, but it's also really good for uh, winter in a harsh climate like I live in. I definitely use my spray booth for rattle cans from time to time, but it's not ideal and I prefer to spray paint outside. In the winter, that's not the best, especially when you live in one of the coldest cities on earth like I do. Nobody wants to be spray painting a bunch of stuff outside in minus 40. So the airbrush lets me continue my work indoors in a nice, warm, comfortable space. But it does more than that. It unlocks a painting style that would be completely impossible for me to achieve with a brush. Being able to zenithal highlight is so so valuable to a person of my skill level. It really is like cheating. And you know what? I don't care. That's a good thing. What's wrong with cheating? Especially since it lets me paint in a way that feels so natural and intuitive to me. It makes me want to paint. It makes me excited to paint. If that's cheating, then cheating is awesome. My weak spot with the airbrush is detail. Now, despite a lot of practice, I'm still only comfortable spraying out large areas and can't yet color in the line, so to speak. But my buddy Emil sent me a very sexy present, and this is hopefully gonna change that. His own Squidmar airbrush. It's not just pretty, it comes with multiple sizes of needles, one of which will hopefully help me get a little bit more precise with my spraying. And this was my first time using it. I started out painting big fleshy areas, which is something I'm already comfortable comfortable with, but I figured I could take a stab at something a little more precise and try to do all the leathers, including the straps. I was excited that I was able to do this decently. And with this first model, I think I can say that I can do more detailed work with it than I've been able to do previously. I still don't buy a lot of Citadel paints. I prefer brands like Reaper or Vallejo, but there are some paints from them that I do use regularly. Some of their effects paints are really wonderful and much like airbrushing on acrylic inks, their contrast paints have become a staple in my painting process. Not only do they help me achieve some paint jobs that look better than my skill set should allow, but I especially love using them as weathering effects. Using contrast paints as a wash over things like bone and metallics has become a defining feature of my painting style. And you know what? When they came out and there was all this hype, I thought, meh, not interested, too fancy for me, too expensive. Again, I was depriving myself of something awesome. And, and for what? You gotta open up yourself to new things, even if they seem expensive or complicated, because that thing might become a crucial step in your artistic journey. Like this rust effect. 
It's not the cheapest effect paint in the world. And yeah, I have found a bunch of ways to effectively do rust, but nothing comes close to the level of realism this particular rust texture gives you. It just feels like magic when it's applied and it transforms my model into something that looks like it could give me tetanus. Of course, I can't be discussing things that I avoided for too long without talking about oil paints and oil washes. I recently made a video all about them, how much I love them, how to use them, and why they're so awesome. So I won't get into details much here, but for real, oil washes has leveled up my painting and my confidence possibly even more than the airbrush did. I can't say that one has become more important than the other, but the combination of airbrushing, especially with inks, and oil washes have made me finally feel like a legitimate painter. I'm never going to be someone that tries to win painting competitions. Wait, uh, the whole point of this video is discussing how wrong I was for saying I will never try or do, to do certain things. So let me backtrack. I am currently in no way interested in getting into competitive painting. For now, I'm just enjoying the freedom to paint things that I think look pretty damn good. Things that the average person not in the hobby would look at and go, wow, that's amazing. And that's all thanks to the various things I eventually let myself try. I've never felt more creative potential as an artist as I do at this very moment. And the best part about that is that I know, having reflected on all of this, that my current ability, my current tool set, it's all temporary, it's all growing. And in a year from now, who knows what sort of crazy things I'll be working with. There are loads of techniques that I'd love to integrate into my workflow. Something like a Cricut cutter for making stencils or cool layered textures, laser cutting MDF and styrene, finally learning to 3D sculpt myself. Right now, I'm not gonna be trying those things due to various limitations, mostly time and space, but no longer will I say never. I happily invite them and any other technological progress into my hobby. I can't imagine not having these wonderful tools that I'm using now. I never wanna go back to being the guy that grumpily wrote off things like airbrushes or 3D printers or hell, even painting minis. That guy was wrong. That guy was an idiot and was not proving any sort of valid point. It was a stupid hill to die on. It was a stupid mindset to take. It did nothing but limit and harm myself as an artist. So this is my message to you. If you find yourself reacting this way to certain tools or materials or methods or whatever, maybe take a moment to pause and reflect on why you're having that sort of reaction. Is it, is it valid? Is it legitimate? Is it based on anything rational? Or is it simply a cover for being afraid to try something? Or, or feeling bad because you can't access something? All I ask is that you take the time to honestly have this discussion with yourself. Because if you do, I think in the end, you'll be better for it. And maybe end up allowing yourself to find an entirely new way of creating that fulfills you as an artist in ways that you never were before. Just try it. Please, try something new. Never say never. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video and more so I hope it inspires you to give something you were reluctant about another chance. If you liked the video, hit the like button. Let me know in the comment section below. I'd also like to know what is the thing that you didn't want to do or you weren't interested in that you finally tried and now you love. Let me know in the comments. If you want to pick up some tools and supplies to try something new, head over to blackmagiccraft.ca where I have my essential equipment page. Shopping through those links helps fund the production of videos like this. Another great way you can help me out and help me keep making these videos is by joining the channel on Patreon. I'd love to have your support and have you as the newest member of the Black Magic Craft Fellowship. That's it for this one, everyone. See you again next video.